I'll give the call to the member for Bowman. Sorry. Though not a member of the committee, I do want to speak on what I think is a really important report that's been delivered with very impressive recommendations. We've talked for a long time about the two challenges in welfare reform, the two bookends of education, that is the zero to fives and entering into formal schooling and transitioning young people out of formal education into the workforce. And in this second area, uh, this committee has focused with their excellent report. For a long time now, we've known that we have a huge skills imbalance in Australia and, put simply, 170,000 foreigners come in to do the work that we can't skill our local people to do. They repatriate those salaries overseas and it costs our economy about $20 billion a year. At the same time, we produce around 140,000 unemployable Australians from the school system every year, going straight on to youth allowance, and another 130,000 of them each year sequence from youth allowance into New Start. And this is a direct and measurable failure of our education system. There is nothing more than government can do than provide opportunity. But at this point, we're not yet able to produce the skilled Australians to do the work our nation needs. Look, we're a low population economy, high on capital, low on labour numbers, high on minimum wage, but low on people to do the jobs in the new economy that we're going to need. This is a massive challenge for Australia. And I'm glad that this report considered those measures. What I want to see is a very, very much a revisioning re uh, of tertiary education, attracting more people who wouldn't contemplate training into TAFE and other private education providers, and encouraging people at TAFE to contemplate a blended degree with university earlier. I don't think it's adequate that you need to complete your TAFE degree before you can realistically get into university. It's time to remove that barrier. And what we need to be doing is looking at sequencing those 140,000 young Australians who can do no better than receive uh, income replacement from the state to contemplate a career in one of our high quality TAFEs. And the obvious way to achieve that is to remove the upfront costs, which is precisely what the Commonwealth has done. But I want to see much greater TAFEs with far stronger partnerships with university. And tonight, they are the points that I want to make as I highlight the important work by MSIT in South East Queensland. But secondly, I'm still frustrated at the lack of partnerships that we have with our skills councils and even the understanding between jurisdictions of precisely what the needs are for the next generation's training. The jobs of tomorrow are still not adequately catered for in TAFE. And lastly, what I want to emphasise is that in schools, as they struggle with the university pathway and the vocational pathway, we need to be absolutely cautious that we don't close off one pathway to students by promoting another. I don't think that we should be closing off the vocational students their pathway into tertiary education. They may not be getting an OP score, as we know it in Queensland, but pathways for those students at any time after leaving school should be the possibility of doing just one or two subjects at university, picking up one or two MOOCs online, and not just thinking that because you chose when you were 15 to be a hairdresser that that is all you will ever contemplate until you are 21. Because the bridge back into university, uh, no matter how theoretically attractive that is and bureaucratically simple, is a massive step to go back five years in demographics and start studying again with 17-year-olds. And so many people can never achieve that. Now, MSIT are grappling with just those concerns, with 20,000 students, 150 courses. They're looking after southern Brisbane, Logan and Redlands, some of the most challenging areas in Queensland. We're only 9% of the nation's GDP, but it's an area that is absolutely stacked with 15 to 24-year-olds, more so than anywhere else in the state. And MSIT, with its campuses at Mount Cravat, uh, Logan Lee, Yeronga Pili, Alexandra, uh, Alexandra Hills, uh, Bow Desert and Browns Plains does just that by having tertiary education close to home. And while I accept the need for excellence, there is nothing more powerful than having tertiary education somewhere close on a public transport route for those who have never contemplated the possibility of doing that. Look, survey results today came out saying that young Australians aspire more than anything to a successful career followed by home ownership. And as I say repeatedly, there is nothing more greater responsibility, no greater responsibility for a government than the provision of opportunity, the provision of places and pathways that people can take up. It's not up to us to kick doors down, grab people um, by the scruff of the neck and sit them in front of university lecturers. No, no, no. They will do that of their own accord if we make those pathways possible. What MSIT does is make sure that those high-skilled jobs for tomorrow 
uh, can be accessed through this transition. So they have the arrangements for people who left school at 15, people who didn't complete senior, and of course mature age students. I do want to emphasise that the Brisbane economy is mostly light commercial and nice manufacturing, so it's a little unusual. It has Gold Coast just down the road and a real emphasis on tourism. But we do have to be careful. I know we can fill seats at TAFE on a whole range of service industries. We know that internal consumption is a growth area for every economy. But we must be skilling in science, technology, engineering. These are the really big areas. We refer to them as the STEM professions. We must be drawing people on the margins into these areas because these are the GDP generating jobs. It's just not enough to, at the age of 17, simply because you weren't exposed to science, technology, um, engineering and math at school, you never ever had a great and inspiring teacher in that area, to rule it out for life because these are the areas that are economy transforming. And we must do everything we can to inspire young people into this direction, everything to inspire young women in particular to contemplate a career in these areas where often they never have. There's a great imbalance in science and technology for intake of young women and we can do better. Look, lastly, some of the recommendations that came out of that report, and particularly reading the submissions, really indicates that we can still do better in a couple of the areas that I want to mention. The first one is the need potentially, this was suggested by TAFE Directors Australia, to help the public provider align their education and training outcomes with the needs of our economy is effectively a charter, a charter that understands through states and territories what our national priorities are. There's still too much uh, jurisdictional difference. We need to better align those federal and state providers so that Queensland is not purely focusing on Queensland skilling needs. Because in reality, when you're looking for a job, these boundaries need to disappear. Every state needs to be pulling its weight. Young Tasmanian children should be dreaming of a job in the mining communities in the electorate of Durack. I mean, young Queenslanders shouldn't just think that tourism is the be-all and end-all because they live on the Gold Coast. We are still not there yet. Uh, secondly, the Skills Council can still play a more nuanced role in this. They still need to be looking forward to the workforce needs of tomorrow, and I've already referred to that. That is still not happening to the satisfaction of TAFEs. Linking into small business is wonderful, an emerging area, but let's be honest, not all of commercial South East Queensland and every business is regularly reminded of the need to workforce plan, to think about the jobs and the skills they'll need, and to feed that back in. I mean, when conditions in the workforce are changing, don't assume that everyone in TAFE knows that. Don't assume that every university lecturer understands that. Many of them have not been in the workforce for nearly a decade. So we need that feedback directly from small business, because they've got a stake in this. And the idea that somebody else does the training is old thinking, and we can do far better than that. Let's all remember also the role, that social the role of social capital, and this is that TAFEs are increasingly providing those uh, core skills in workplace living skills, workplace literacy. We call these foundation skills for many students that have had very, very challenging backgrounds. Thank you for the work of TAFE, not just directly you know, in the uh, provision of lectures, but in the social support to keep them struggling, young mums struggling with a partner that's giving them no support at all, struggling on a low income with closely spaced kids to still make it to TAFE every day. But they deal with those skills as well. So that is absolutely vitally important. TAFEs are also obviously giving the links to apprenticeships, industry linkages, traineeships, all of those things, many of which we don't have direct uh, uh, concerns through universities, but TAFE does do that. And lastly, of course, we need the level playing field. The Queensland Government doing great work in privatising the TAFE space to maximise the use of those lazy assets. Only 27% of TAFE assets are actually used between nine and five. Extraordinary. The three quarters of TAFE assets in Queensland are what we refer to as lazy assets. Why not have someone else coming in using those assets as a market price, training, competing with TAFE? TAFE's not to be the provider of last resort. TAFE is the provider of excellence. But we want more than just that one single body responding to the needs of Queensland and more generally the nation. States and territories can also provide, I think, TAFEs with more policy certainty about where we need to go in training. So this is a reminder, I think, for all governments that was all brought up beautifully in this report. I commend those on the committee for their great work.